Hi, this is Stacy Chalemi, and today I'd like to talk about how to cope with an epilepsy disorder, a disorder that's never going away. How it all began. I developed epilepsy at the age of five. At five, I had contracted a sore throat and an ear infection. My mother brought me to the doctors that evening, and the pediatrician had put me on penicillin and told my mother that I have to rest. No one thought much of it at that time. I rested in bed, and I was on penicillin for about ten days. On the tenth night, when she put me to bed, my lips were more red than usual. The next morning at 8 a.m., my mother woke up because she heard an unusual noise coming from my room that sounded like I was choking on my saliva. She walked into my bedroom to find me in my bed turning blue and having a grand mal seizure. This was the first time I ever experienced a seizure. During the seizure, I fell to the floor, my eyes rolled back to the left, and my whole body began to shake. My teeth began to chatter. I started to foam at the mouth. Then I choked on my saliva. My skin color began to turn blue because of the lack of oxygen I was enduring. My mother ran to the phone to call the ambulance, and she had me rushed to the hospital. They brought me to the emergency room and hurried me to the isolation ward. The medical doctors had no idea if this was any type of serious or contagious illness that brought on the seizure. They administered many tests to try to diagnose the cause of the grand mal seizure. The doctors finally concluded that the grand mal seizure came from a virus. This virus was not an ordinary virus. This virus was known as encephalitis. The doctors had told my parents that the bacteria from the ear infection had traveled to my brain and that the virus was still in my brain. They were told that the viral encephalitis had to leave my brain naturally on its own. I was induced into a coma for four days. After the second day, my parents were told that if I survive, I probably would have severe brain damage or I could become paralyzed and paraplegic. My parents were devastated, but they never gave up hope. On the fourth day, while I was in a coma, my father lay down beside me, and he began praying to a saint in Greece. As he prayed, he was visualizing the statue in front of his old church. In Greece, water would roll down the saint's eyes. As my father raised his head and opened his eyes, he looked directly at me to find a teardrop rolling down from my face. As soon as I woke up, they tested me right away. I had no brain damage, but an infection that had traveled to my brain and caused scar tissue damage, which left me with epilepsy for years. I endured endless seizures. For me, living with epilepsy has definitely been a roller coaster ride with many ups and downs. In this video, I want to discuss how to cope with your feelings. Learn how to deal with the endless emotions that you experience living with epilepsy. When I googled epilepsy on the internet, there were lots of articles on what epilepsy was, the symptoms of epilepsy, the medications for epilepsy, and so forth. You know where I'm getting at. But there were very few articles about coping with your negative emotions caused by epilepsy. I feel like this topic is so important because when you have epilepsy, in order to do well, so you can live a happy, healthy, and productive life, you need to learn how to cope with your emotions and change your outlook on life. Epilepsy is a disorder that doesn't go away. For some people, they become one of the lucky ones who are able to have their seizures become controlled. But those individuals who still need to take care of themselves and live within their limitations because anything can set off a seizure, those people struggle. And for others who are not controlled, they live with the endless emotions of fear, anger, depression, hopelessness, and frustration that circulates from their heart to their mind throughout their soul. Searching for endless answers, some clueless where to begin, and others too embarrassed to speak about their illness because of the way society has stigmatized epilepsy. Epilepsy is not talked about in the media like cancer, heart disease, or diabetes. It's an invisible disorder that's hidden in the woodworks. And the only way things are going to change 
is if we come together to make a change. But before you help others, you need to help yourself. Here are some things that I've done over the course of the years to help myself cope with epilepsy. Accept epilepsy into your life. To accept epilepsy into your life, you must look at it positively and realize that there's no such thing as a perfect person. There is no need to feel a sense of embarrassment because you have epilepsy. Each day of our life, we try to master the daily troubles that come our way and how to overcome the problems that have already occurred in our lives. Should we be considered a triumph? Ignoring your problems, not dealing with them, is an easy way out. To face them and deal with them are accomplishments. Accepting our problems and dealing with them helps us to grow mentally, physically, and spiritually. When I opened up telling people about my seizure disorder, I was shocked to find out how many people had epilepsy or knew someone who had the disorder. Also, put your weaknesses aside and focus on your strengths. Each individual has his or her beliefs. I believe that everything happens for a reason. You need to love everything about yourself and realize that everything happens for a reason. We may not understand now, but eventually our questions will be answered. This does not necessarily mean that the answers will be laid out on the table for you, but eventually you will put the pieces to the puzzle together. Yet as time passes, we usually can see things more clearly and comprehend why things have turned out the way they did. Personally, I feel that God walks with us during these troublesome times, and he gives us the tools that we need to get through these times. As these problems are occurring, we are learning also, so we can help others struggling. It is our decision to choose if we're going to use these tools that have been given to us. When we go through the hard times in life, it helps to strengthen our inner souls. Each individual consists of three parts, the mind, body, and spirit. We can do anything we put our minds to. The mind is a powerful and vital part of our body. Many underestimate its capability. Another tip I have for you that is very powerful is to learn to love yourself. Self-love may be the greatest and most important love that you'll ever experience in your life. Learning to love yourself may seem like a difficult task to achieve. Many people try to show facade. They go around acting happy like nothing is wrong and life couldn't be better, but inside they hurt emotionally. They have emotional chains wrapped around their hearts. Love cannot enter their hearts. Their hearts are locked, so they cannot let the gift of love flow from their hearts into somebody else's heart. They walk around with pain and emotional suffering because they are angry, perhaps because they have epilepsy. They may feel different because others can drive and they cannot. For whatever the reason is, they are drowning in hidden pain that no one knows about but them. Now you can stop all this. It's time to find the key and unlock the locks wrapped around your heart. It's time to learn to love yourself once again. An important way to love yourself is to take care of yourself emotionally, physically, and spiritually. You need to take some time out for yourself. Go out and get a massage, a facial, a pedicure, or something that strikes your interest that you enjoy to do. Or just go in your backyard and have a cup of coffee or a cup of tea and look around you. Look at the beautiful trees and the beautiful flowers that surround you. You need to go out and have fun. Go out to dinner, go dancing, or go see a movie, or go to a baseball game. Take a walk on the beach. Set aside some time and plan a vacation. Go vacation somewhere relaxing and fun. Now I know right now we have COVID-19, so a lot of these things we can't do right now. But once things start to calm down and go back to its norm, do these things. It's good for you. Don't analyze yourself. Don't criticize yourself. You may get angry and call yourself stupid or say, I can't do anything right. You need to stop those negative thoughts and replace them with positive thoughts. 
For example, I made a mistake. That's okay. Nobody's perfect. We learn from our mistakes. When you begin to think negative, immediately stop yourself and change your thought into a positive one. If you are telling yourself that you are a failure, you're much more likely to fail than if you picture yourself as a success. There is nothing wrong to give yourself a pat on the back. You need to give yourself a little boost to be a winner. Reward yourself when you do something to better yourself. Give yourself something special. Take time each day to tell yourself, I accept that I have epilepsy. I am no different than anyone else. I am beautiful and bright. Or I love myself. I'm loving, caring, and worthy of love. I believe in myself. Write these quotes down and put them where you can see them every day. You must realize that what is most important is not what others think about you, it's how you feel about yourself. In order to feel good about yourself, you must need to accept yourself. You must look at yourself positively and realize that there is no such thing as a perfect person. What is most important in our life is that we try to master our daily troubles that come our way and overcome the problems that have already occurred in our lives. Now this should be considered a triumph. If you are unhappy with yourself, then you need to do something about it. Ignoring your problems and your emotions, not dealing with them, is the easy way out. To face them and deal with them are accomplishments. Accepting ourselves helps us to grow mentally, physically, and spiritually. Remember, it's not how we look on the outside that's important, it's how we feel on the inside that matters the most. In this life, in order to survive, it is important that we accept ourselves for who we are, feel good about ourselves, and carry an inner strength so that we can live a happy, healthy, and productive life. When we are young, most of us have people in our lives that can help mold us. They help develop our strength, wisdom, and knowledge, the things we need in order to survive in this world. Yet many of us forget what we have learned and we focus on what's unimportant, such as how we look on the outside. The results are in the end. You are going to end up feeling emotionally drained and unable to live a productive life. Everyone on this earth is here for a reason. We need to pass on what we have learned along to others. It is selfish and pure laziness to pity ourselves because you may not have the model figure. You must learn to accept yourself and love yourself. You are not alone. Many people feel unhappy with themselves. Listen to what your heart is telling you. Your heart will never lie to you because it only tells the truth. You must have the courage to ask your heart why you refuse to love yourself the way you are. Usually when we are unhappy with ourselves, it's because we are embarrassed about whatever we're trying to hide. Your body is not something you should be ashamed of having. You need to help yourself by accepting yourself and loving yourself for who you are. This is the first step in order to heal yourself and feel good about yourself. Ask yourself the question, what level of self-approval have I reached today? Ask yourself this question every day. Here are seven things that I've done to help to learn to love and accept myself for who I am. 1. Accept yourself for who you are and learn to love yourself for who you are as a person. 2. Understand yourself mentally, physically, and spiritually as a person. 3. Learn to control your mind, body, and emotions. 4. Strengthen your inner self and make it apparent to others. 5. Begin changing what you don't like about yourself. Number 6. Notice the change in your self-esteem and self-confidence. And 7. Have tremendous pride in yourself. People realize that in order to change and to strengthen themselves, they must accept themselves and learn how to live with themselves in a productive manner. You need to look at life in a positive way. You need to say to yourself, okay, I'm not happy with the person I've become. I need to change, and this is what I'm going to do about it. Stop being lackadaisical. This is the first step to healing and strengthening our souls and our self-esteem. 
Be proud of who you are and be thankful each morning that you wake up and you feel the warmth of the sun and the beauty that surrounds you. Love yourself and be good to yourself and treat yourself good. The more you love yourself, the more you'll be able to love others and the more others will want to be around you. Loving yourself will help the lives of others around you as well as your own. Remember, everyone has something in this life. Nobody's perfect. Accept yourself for who you are, love yourself, and use your strengths to make yourself a better person. And then use those strengths to help others. And most important, focus on the positive things in your life. Negativity will destroy you. Positivity will bring you to new levels in life. A positive journey awaits us all.